Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Let's join together this Eucharistic celebration. Please join me in the entrance antiphon. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us take a moment to call to mind our sin. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have been renewed by Paschal Remedies, transcending the likeness of our earthly parentage, may be transformed in the image of our Heavenly Maker, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples entertain folly? The kings of the earth took their stand and the princes gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. As they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook, and there, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The word of the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Why do the nations rage and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against the anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. Bless the Lord who take refuge in the Lord. He who is throned in heaven laughs, the Lord derives them. Then in anger he speaks to them. He terrifies them in his wrath. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish.
Alleluia, alleluia. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There is a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Who is born of flesh is flesh, and who is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, as we continue in our Easter readings, we hear from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, of the story of Nicodemus, one of the rulers of the Jews who um, you know, was a believer in the Christ and who did um, support him, even if um, privately. And we see Nicodemus you know, privately reaching out to Jesus, um, trying to understand who he is and, and what his mission is. And Jesus offers this kind of um, you know, odd response this morning to Nicodemus, telling Nicodemus that he must be born again. Nicodemus, of course, is confused and asks of the Lord, you know, what do you mean born again? How can someone be born twice or a second time? And Jesus explains that he must be, um, you know, born again um, from heaven. That's always been a beautiful um, point of reflection um, for me, even in my own personal prayer um, throughout the years. Um, because, you know, every season of our life we're called um, in our Christian discipleship to once again, um, be born again um, of the Holy Spirit. But we especially highlight that um, in this Easter season. That's why we have the renewal of our baptismal promises and, and the sprinkling rite. We celebrate um, baptism and Easter vigil. Um, Easter is all about, um, you know, being born again. In a sense, um, we have to be born of the Spirit. It doesn't matter if we're 17 years old or, you know, 77 years old. Regardless of our physical age or our physical, um, you know, point in life, whether we're young or old, we're all called to be born again of the Spirit to be able to enter into heaven. So we have to be um, born again of the Spirit to be able to enter into heaven. Now, sacramentally, you know, we receive the indwelling of the Holy Trinity um, in baptism. Baptism is when we are born again um, sacramentally. Um, but subjectively, you know, we're called to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives each and every day um, through our personal prayer, continuously, you know, being born again of life and spirit. And I love how Jesus concludes the gospel this morning. I'm kind of offering a little description of the Holy Spirit. He says, the wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. What a beautiful description of the Holy Spirit in a sense. The Holy Spirit's like this wind that blows into our lives. You can't really, you know, see the wind, but you can feel and encounter its effects. That's the same with the Holy Spirit. We may not be able to see the Holy Spirit, but when we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit this Easter season, you know, we can feel the, the cool breeze of the Spirit, so to say, um, touching our hearts. And we can see the you know, transforming effects of being born again by the Holy Spirit in our lives. So hopefully this past Lent helped you focus on an area of, um, you know, rebirth and renewal. And hopefully this Easter season will be a place of continuing to um, receive that um, rebirth and renewal. I always like to use the image of a plant, you know, plant it where it is and may it blossom. 
um, and flower forth where it has been planted. Hopefully during Lent, the, the soil of your hearts was cleared and a new seed of, of life was planted in your spirit. And the Caesar season is all about watering it with the Holy Spirit and allowing it to blossom and flower where it has been planted to bring forth the good fruits that God began in Lent and continues in this Easter season in your life. As those reborn by water and the Spirit for the baptized, may they always welcome those who seek faith in Christ. We pray to the Lord. For religious leaders, may they guide the faithful with wisdom from above. We pray to the Lord. For all people, may our common birth in human flesh lead to common commitment to the common good. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, may they experience a new birth of healing in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For the dead, may they awaken to eternal rebirth in the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. For our silent intentions. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, God above, and breathe into us the spirit who blows where it wills. May your inspiration bear us in ways of insight and wisdom. We may live today as citizens of the kingdom yet to come, where Christ lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bless the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. <coughs> Bless the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you that more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ and be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mori, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy they should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. and Antiphon. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with oh my God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael. Amen.